Hi everybody and welcome back to another squad cast. I have two updates this week. One, a new squad of Chthonian Berserks and the second is some more info on Voltan society and guilds and that sort of thing. So let's go through it. <laughs> Yes, so Warhammer community have blessed us with two new updates since I did my last squat cast. And my last squat cast was three updates in one, so either I'm getting slower or they're getting faster. No one yet knows exactly when these will be out or whether there'll be a, like a codex or something. Um, they're getting to the point where there's now, it looks like there's enough units for, you know, we've got a good idea of what the army is. But yeah, no official release dates for any of this yet. It's all just like preview info. Uh, the only thing that has come out, of course, is the actual Necromunda squats. So anyway, we have two things to look at. So let's start with the first new unit. The Leagues of Voltan let loose the augmented fury of the Chthonian Berserks. We'll get to this in a bit, but the Chthonian is another one of those words Warhammer really likes to use. Um, it's got a very small lexicon of stuff that it uses again and again and again, and Chthonian's one of them. Um, we've seen a lot of the Leagues of Voltan so far. The Hearthkin warriors make up the core of every kin host. Those are the standard guys that were released first, the first look. Um, often riding impaired Sagittar ATVs, which are the bugly little moon trucks, uh, with the mighty Einhir Hearthguard unleashing salvos of devastating fire. Oh, those are the Exo Squats that look like they're in Starcraft or Mantic games or something. Um, and from out of the solid front line strikes an unexpected sight. Furious Chthonian Berserks, punching things with their big punchy fists of punching. Um, obviously, this guy's the best guy. He's got a big punchy fist. Um, we'll look at the model in a second. Let's find out what they are. Uh, the courageous warriors of the Chthonian Mining Guilds represent some of the most heavily augmented kin, unreasonably brave souls who have enhanced the physical capabilities of their clone skeins with cybernetic upgrades, all the better to extract precious minerals from rad-plagued rad nebulae, explosive asteroids, and fathomless ocean depths. Boosted by the cyber stims that flood their systems, the berserks can keep battling through life or death situations. That presumably is why they're half naked. They issue the high-tech STC weapons wielded by the rest of the kin using robust mining equipment such as heavy plasma. Well, I mean, it gives them things, but it's, it's robust mining equipment like punchy fists, big hammers, those things you smash up meat with, and glow sticks. Um... Yeah, so, Chthonian Mining Guild is interesting, right? Chthonian means of the underworld. Uh, it's an old Greek term, the gods of the underworld and deities of the underworld were called Chthonian deities, so you've got, like, Hades, obviously, Persephone, probably, and Hecate, quite a lot. Um, so it just means of the, of the underworld, and it sounds kind of classical, so Warhammer uses it a lot. That's why Horus comes from a world called Chthonia, which is a mining world, and kind of anything to do with mining ends up being called Chthonian in Warhammer. Um, so yeah, they're Chthonian mining guilds because mining happens under the ground. Brilliant. Um, the, yeah, so um, yeah, these are some miners, some little muscly miners who apparently are part of the guilds and not part of the kin hosts, which is a different thing, which is interesting. And we'll get to that in a bit because the second article we'll talk about today is the one about how guilds work. Um, but that separation was one that had been there since the 80s in, in old squat history. Um, so these guys, yeah, look, they're, 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 they've got their combat pants on. They've got that weird mix of uh, STC technology and... Um, you know, leather belts. Um, they've got their cybernetic upgrades, which is an interesting concept, given they're all meant to be genetically engineered to be perfect at their job. Um, and then they've got some crazy armor. Um, you've got male and female uh, squats here. Um, I like their battle dungarees. Those are quite fun. I like that anyone can have battle dungarees. Here's a guy in battle dungarees. Um, so they've got their battle dungarees and their big choppy axes, because apparently all the high-tech weaponry is too, too good or something. Um, it's a bit weird, isn't it? It feels like a strange turn uh, that the, the guilds are less high-tech than the kin hosts. Um, also, I kind of like how these fit better in Necromunda. Like, they kind of look like a bridge between these and the Necromunda squats, right? You could totally see these running alongside your um, squat guild prospector gang. Um, especially if they actually get anything that looks like a drill, which you'd think would be useful in... Um, 
in their mining job. Um, the other thing these really remind me of um, is the old... So, so look, um, squat slayers, right? Dw dwarf slayers are a thing in Warhammer. They wield big axes and they go crazy and they're berserk and they're frothing at the mouth. They're also, you know, Viking trope as well. Um, which it, it all folds into these squats. Um, the original squats, you could... They didn't really have slayers. You could take squats with, like, two axes and things. But... Um, when they were trying to do the second edition of squats and failing because they, they didn't really release a second edition 90s version of squats that's when they died they did toy with the idea of cyber slayers uh which is like these things um these apparently are un unreleased or barely released limited edition whatever unreleased models for the squat cyber slayer range which as you can see very obvious 90s one piece models very obviously influenced by 90s dwarf you know dragon slayers and ogre slayers and ogre slayers a thing giant slayers that's what i was talking about um so yeah, look, they're they're in they're in they're an evolution of the the dwarf slayer uh, mixed in, which was always sort of influenced by the sort of berserker thing, um, and wrapped up as uh, explained as miners. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what they are. Um, yeah, so I yeah I like them. I I as I said, I'm leaning more and more towards the idea of just getting some squat. I've got some of the squat prospectors, getting some Votan getting some of these, getting some Caradron and smushing it all together and using it for whatever I want. Um, and that will necessarily make the Votan feel a bit more old fashioned, uh, I think. Um, so for me, yeah, the, these will fit in well. I can totally see these being also things like a proxy Goliath gang for your ash wastes or a um, uh, some sort of like, you know, pit slave gang if they ever bring those back with their cybernetic upgrades. I think this would work really well. Um, the uh, weapons look fine. I still think Punchy Fist Guy is the best one. I'm a little worried that um, these are going to be one of those data sheets that have uh, one option for each thing you can buy in the box. Or you can have one guy with two Punchy Fists and one guy with a meat tenderizer. And um, yeah, but then uh, will I even be playing them in 40k? Who knows? I'll definitely get them. I'll definitely paint them. I'll definitely play Necromunda with them. Whether I'll play 40k, who knows? Anyway... The important thing here, the other thing we need to look at is uh, where they come from. So they're part of the Chthonian Mining Guild. And if we click that, it leads us to this, which is last week's uh, law update. Um, so, what we got here? The stalwart kin who make up the leads of Botan are doughty, rugged survivalists. Um, and that's, that is an interesting term to use when we read the rest of this. Uh, but the galaxy is a grim enough place that they won't go it alone. Again, uh, there's, oh, the flags. Um, all kin, save for a few rare outcasts, belong to a kindred, a social group somewhere between an extended family and a nation state, its members all springing from the same genetic crucibles to for for forge an unbreakable fellowship. Right, so they've got clans, fine. A kindred might be a few dozen son or a few million, but they will live, train, and toil in the same shared hold. Kin prefer not to waste words, so hold is a malleable term. It could mean a fortified outpost, a live-in factory, or a warren of tunnels, floating in the void of space, clinging to asteroids, or hovering on the fringe of a black hole, or they might be across the surface of a whole planet. Um, so this makes sense in old fluff. Squats lived in strongholds, which were usually in a mountain, because of course they freaking were. Um, but fine, they've just lost the strong, because kin don't like too many words. Um, and they look like a cyberpunk nightmare. Yeah, that's that's where we are um, in uh, in our kin hold. Um, most kindreds have some means of defending themselves and, and a mighty battle force of their own rights, but they tend to unite for protection under the banner of a league, which is, again, get back to the old squat fluff. That's how that worked. Um, these formal affiliations allow kindreds to share the benefits of trade, military support, and so on. Leagues like the Yimyir Yim 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 conglom Yim Yim conglomerate are massive and ancient power blocks, but others have waned in power or only recent prominence in recent times, such as the Seran Tok Mercandile Leagues, who have profited greatly from trade within the Tau Empire. I could, mm, uh, yeah, which is cool. Fine. Yeah, whatever. Leagues. Uh, I, I look forward to the League of Emberg and the League of Grendel coming back. But um, I was kind of thinking that once you've got that, would you not go, oh, the League of Demi-Urg, who have profited greatly from the Tau Empire, because that immediately explains the whole Tau Demi-Urg thing. Um, you just call call that the League that are close to Tau. Um, but what of the guilds? So here we go, guilds. These groups, it's almost like, it's almost like they knew they were going to release the guild miners next week. 
But what about the guilds? The guilds exist outside the bounds of kindred or league, uniting all who practice a particular trade within a given region of kin space. Whether you make a living by salvaging broken void craft or concocting nutritious liquid rations, there's a guild for you, setting standards, providing accreditation and demanding tithes. Guild membership is voluntary, but there's no love lost between guildkin and freelancers who regard each other as distributable and hidebound respectively. In theory, the guilds are not political entities, but independent commercial groups dedicated to ensuring fair competition. In practice, smaller guilds rarely be extend beyond a single hold and maintain key positions within their ruling bodies. Guildmasters typically sit on the hearth spake, hearth spake, a kindred's governing council, as civilian representatives alongside the military hosts of the kin hosts and the grim near left hanging. Uh, competition between guilds can become heated, even drawing other species into the crossfire as jockeying guildmasters sponsored oath ban as jockeying guildmasters sponsor oath band expeditions to survey systems rich in resources. Anyone who happens to already inhabit these hotly contested worlds are out of luck. Existing civilizations and ecosystems are a much lower priority than beating rivals to the punch. And there we get to in what way are this species going in what way are this faction going to be bad guys? And the answer is, um, they are uh, all-consuming space capitalists. I think that's what we're going for here. Um, the, yeah, that's it, right? So the, um, the idea here is that the guilds are completely commercial and will wipe out a civilization for profit. They're like, space Caradron is the bit of dwarfs they're going for. Or it really reminds me, for some reason, that really reminds me of um, Avatar. Uh, the guilds searching for their unobtainium. Uh, during, the, despite the fractious natures, guilds are invaluable to kin society. Their accumulated know-how and contacts are what smooths trade and transit between disparate kindreds, providing a web of organisation and support that runs throughout the leagues, from star mining and gravitic fracking. <laughs> so yeah, look, I mean, that's the idea, right? That's what we're learning in this, is that the 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 bad guy bit of, of our, our required bad, bad, bad guy bit of the faction is that they are willing to completely, to frack asteroids uh, and destroy ecosystems and kill civilizations to turn a profit on their mining. Um, which means that, uh, and it, it's sort of it, all the um, rugged survivalist, uh, they're not going it alone, all that sort of like, I guess, almost American exceptionalism terms fold in here. That's the, that's, those are the tropes we're going for, I think. Those sort of, um, yeah, well, we're just striking out on our own as a prospector to make a load of money and we don't care who we kill to get it. Um, this is an interesting image, isn't it? Because uh, I'm pretty sure we've seen this image before, but they cut this mining guy out. Uh, I think we've just seen this bit before, um, which is fun. Um, but yeah, so there we are. There we get to the heart of, of what's going to make these the bad guys. Uh, I think they're still going to be presented as like a valid option for the Imperium. And one of the videos I did a while ago about how they could potentially solve the uh, problem of having the Imperium as their main faction, um, you know, suggested that idea that, that you you introduce other human-like factions, and they don't all have to be bad in the same way, they just have to be bad in different ways to the Imperium. Um, and this is how that works. Like, the advantage is you're not in, you know, uh, Space Nazi Imperium, but the disadvantage is you are um, ravenously ecosystem-destroying uh, profiteers. Um, so, you know, fine. Uh, there's a slight change here. The only change here that is interesting to me is that... Um, guilds actually having guilds fleshing out the guilds um in the old fluff basically you had the leagues and the strongholds which are your brotherhoods what they now call kin um which were your normal squat organizational bodies and then uh you, the guild the guild singular this uh this is a guild master from the other thing the guild was the engineering guild that's what it meant so um the guild were more high tech but looked more like weird and individualist and rugged. Um, they all had the beards and the biker stuff and rode around bikes. And the idea was they rode around on bikes between all the different strongholds um, selling their technology. So the guild were the advanced one, technologically advanced ones to the strongholds and also the weird outsiders. Um, whereas this obviously makes it more like, um, not only are our guild models less technologically advanced or more sort of weird and, and, and low tech, um, but there are lots and lots of guilds and they're all competing, which, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Anyway, that is the squat cast for this two weeks. That's that's the new info we've got. Um, as they say at the top of this, we've got Hearthkin Warriors, we've got Exo Squats, we've got something for them to ride around in. Um, my guess next would be some sort of leader. And then you've got an army, haven't you? Um, 
yeah, that's all they need, really. Some sort of command leader thing. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some sort of stompy robot. But um, yeah, and then we're ready to go, presumably. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, that was a squat cast. Uh, I will return with more squat casts later when there's more information. Okay, bye.